Hello everyone, and welcome to the video manual for Cartrana CV. My name is Skille, and I'm the author of the software. Cartrana CV is a decision tree based Hold'em calculator. And this means that it will allow you to enter Hold'em decision tree, after which it will calculate the expected value of every decision within that tree. Here on the screen we have an example of what such a tree would look like. Here the software has just calculated the expected value of every decision in this tree. In Cartrana CV, decision points for a player are indicated with these white nodes with the name of the player on them. And for each decision, the actions that the player is considering are listed. For example, in this decision, Big Blind is either racing to 12 or folding. Below each action that Big Blind is considering is the list of conditions under which Big Blind will take this action. And here in the lower left, we see that the expected value for Big Blind's strategy at this decision point turns out to be $1.68. Now, next to this functionality, Cartrana CV can do a lot more. For example, we'll see in a minute that if you mouse over any item in a tree, you'll get pop-ups with more information on that item, such as its EV and equity. You can even zoom in, down to the level of the performance of individual starting hands. Cartrana CV also offers the ability to make graphs, it can work out unexploitable shuffling ranges, it can perform ICM conversions for tournaments, and it even offers advanced users the ability to write scripts. While the interface may seem complex at first, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that hard to work with at all. If you take the time to watch all instructional videos, you'll see a description of all available functionality. And I'll be doing this with the use of some examples. I would like to advise to play along with the software running while you are watching this video. You can download it on the website here. And you'll find all the save files that are used here. Now for most things I'll be showing, you won't need a registered version. Trial mode should be enough in most cases, but of course not all. In some cases, if you're in trial mode, you'll just have to do with watching the video. One final disclaimer before I begin. This is a technical manual for how the software works. In these videos, I'm assuming that you know what EV calculations are, and you know how to do them for yourself. If you want to see videos on how to do these calculations by hand, then I'd like to refer you to some of the example videos that are linked to below the links to this video manual. So, let's begin. In the rest of this video, I will be discussing what all of the numbers in the tree mean, as well as going over all of the available pop-ups. Here we have the save file shortdemo.stx. In this tree we have a simple example in 100NL, blinds 50 cent one dollar. A rake has been set at 0% and there's no additional money in the pot. It's small blind versus big blind. Small blind raises to 3 dollars with this range of hands and folds otherwise. And big blind either calls with this range or folds. The flop is queen of diamonds, 7 of spades, 6 of spades and small blind c bets with all hands. And now, Big Blind decides to raise to 12 in case he holds top pair or better, a flush draw, an outside straight draw, or a gut shot. And he will fold all other hands. Small Blind now decides to push if he holds top pair or better, a flush draw, or an outside straight draw. And if Small Blind does not hold one of these hands, he will fold. And Big Blind will now only call the all-in if he holds top pair or better, or a flush draw, and he will fold otherwise. The green arrow symbol here means that in this line we go to showdown, and this blue line here means that all players but one have folded. As you can see, the screen is subdivided into the several phases of a hand. Preflop, flop, turn and river, and turn and river have no play in this particular hand. Also, you'll notice that below each decision node a list of numbers is displayed in blue, and I'll just go over them right now. The first line shows the current size of the pot. So for example, at this decision for Big Blind, there's four dollars in the middle of the table. And this is because Big Blind has posted a one dollar blind, and Small Blind has raised to three dollars, making the pot a total of four dollars. Here it shows that it's another two dollars for Big Blind to call. And this means that he's getting odds of two to one, since he needs to put in another two dollars to compete for the four dollar pot and his remaining stack is $29. So for example here on the flop, Big Blind has only $27 left, since he just put in $2 at this decision. If you mouse over Small Blind's raising condition here, 
you'll get a string with the hands with which he's raising. And below that is a small matrix that shows that range. And if you double click the condition, you'll get a menu where you can edit the range. But we'll leave that for now. OK, and now let's let the software do some work. When you press F7, or this button, or this button in the toolbar, you'll get a progress bar. First one in blue, and then one in red. You may not get the one in blue though, in which case please turn on Merge Monte Carlo and Math. And now we have a screen full of numbers, and when you move your mouse around the screen, you'll get all sorts of pop-ups with more detailed information. And now I'd like to get into what all of these numbers and pop-ups mean. First of all, beneath the decision notes, two new numbers have popped up. Equity and expected value. Equity here means the equity of small blind range versus the range that big blind has at this point in the hand. And apparently this equity is 56.1%. The second number is the expected value for small blinds bet, which is $4.30. And here, big blind strategy of raising to 12 with at least a pair, a flush throw, an outside straight throw or a gut shot, will on average win him $1.70. Now these EV numbers will always take future actions into account, so the EV calculation here also includes big blind's future strategy for what to do if small blind pushes. Next to the raise to 12 action, as well as the conditions under which it is taken, are some percentages. This is how often these actions and conditions occur. Apparently, big blind raises to 12 33.9% of the time, and the alternative, which is to fold, occurs 66.1% of the time. And as you will notice, 66.1 plus 33.9 equals 100%. And beneath the raising action are the three conditions under which it will occur. Of this, at least top pair will occur 17.3% of the time, a flush throw will occur 4% of the time, an outside straight throw will occur 6.2% of the time, and a gut shot will occur 6.45% of the time. And some math will indeed show that these numbers will add up to 33.9%. If I move my mouse over the race to 12 action, you'll get a large pop-up, and I'd like to get into what all these numbers mean. The first line is the title of the action. The second line is the equity of the hands in the race action versus the range small blind has at this time. The third line is the chance that the hands in the action are ahead of small blind range right now. And in the final line you will see that the EV of the action is $5.02, which means that every time big blind races, on average he will win $5.02. And to the right here is the variance of the EV of the race. Please note that there's an STD number behind best hand. This is the uncertainty in this number. The best hand number is calculated by Monte Carlo, which means a large number of simulations, and it's there for an estimation, and it will always be slightly off. And finally, here in the matrix, we have all the starting hands themselves that make up the raising range. And each has its relevant suits and its individual expected value. And I'll get into what these lines mean here in a later video. If you mouse over the individual conditions under which the action is taken, you will again get a pop-up for each individual condition. So for example, here's the pop-up for a flush throw. And if you mouse over the expected value of a decision as a whole, you will also get a pop-up with all the starting hands within that decision. Also note that the expected value of all of the hands that have folded is $0 and are drawn in grey. To get more information on the composition of a range, you can mouse over the decision note itself and you'll get these two pop-ups. The left pop-up will show how often certain hand strengths occur. For example, Big Blind will have one pair 43.9% of the time, and he will have two pair 1.92% of the time. And below that, the composition of fill range is given. In the right pop-up, you will see some bars that show how often, for example, Big Blind has an ace in his hand, or how often he has a king or a queen. The purple part of this bar indicates a pocket pair. The part that is filled entirely to the top is ace-jack. 
the part where one pixel is missing is King Jack, etc. Now the numbers in these pop-ups are based on Monte Carlo, or in other words, a large number of simulations, so they will have a slight error in them. So if you recompute, you'll get slightly different results. Finally, if you mouse over the endpoint of a tree, such as the green showdown symbol here, the software will show you the equity of the players in that endpoint. And here's the equities in case big blind falls. If you want some example hands of a tree, you can press F6 or this button in the toolbar. And you'll get the dialog with some example hands. And if you want to see a run through a particular part of the tree, then you can do that by setting a checkpoint at that part of the tree. To do this, either press F10 or click the checkpoint symbol in the toolbar. And then click on the part of the tree where you want the run to go through. I'll just click this endpoint here. And the checkpoint will now be drawn over it. And if you now press F6 or this button, you'll get a run where the big blind races, small blind pushes and the big blind calls. To remove the checkpoint, just again press F10 or the checkpoint symbol. And now click anywhere. And the checkpoint should disappear. Finally, I would like to point out that the software also offers a hint system. It can be toggled with these three options under Help. If you turn on Help display hints when hovering over tree, then you'll get instructions to everything that is available in a tree if you mouse over it. Now, currently the hint system is inactive anyhow, because there's data in our tree from our previous calculations. So if I mouse over an item now, I'll get a pop-up with information. To clear the data from the tree, press F2, this button or this button. OK, and when I now, for example, mouse over this action, I'll get a hint on what editing operations are available to me here. Apparently I can edit the raise amount by double clicking it. And also there's copy, paste and delete operations available. And if I mouse over a condition, I'll get a similar hint. The second item, help display toolbar hints will toggle a description of all the items in the toolbar. If I now mouse over an item in the toolbar, then I'll get an explanation of what that button does. Also, I'll get hints if I mouse over the quick buttons in the lower left. Finally, help display hints in menus will show hints in menus. For example, if I go to the preflop menu by double clicking a condition, then I will get a hint whenever I hover over any item in this menu. So, if you're in a menu and you're not quite sure how it works, try turning on the hint system to see what all the items in that menu do. Ok, that's it for the introduction to the software. In the next video, I'll show how to create graphs.